We're going to be starting with another one of our college presidents here in our town. She was great. She raised here. She grew up here. She left. She got her education at art history from Yale University. She's back now. She's been here for the past six years. She's the president of Converse College, and she's here today to talk to us about the importance of her passions. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the stage Betsy Fleming. For as long as I can remember, I have always loved art. The visual and performing arts from dance to design, painting, sculpture, music of all kinds, and theater rouse emotion in my heart and new thoughts in my head. One of my earliest conscious memories is of my mother taking me to see Martha Graham, the Martha Graham Dance Company, before I was in kindergarten. The experience was transformative. The feelings and passions expressed through the bodies moving on the stage totally overwhelmed me. Here was a language of movement that communicated so much more than words alone. Here was anguish, precision, determination, and grace captured in the single sweep of a wordless body. I was hooked. And throughout my elementary school years, I was a good student in art and music. This was especially fortunate because I was a ve very slow in learning how to read. It was difficult for me to connect the letters into words and even more challenging for me to connect the words on the page with the words that I heard. It was excruciating, embarrassing even. My younger sister, Melissa, could read before I could. And being shy, at least at that time, my difficulty with words was so much more painful and upsetting than it really needed to be. So the arts became my first languages to share what I valued, what I understood, who and what I loved the most. I love art first and foremost because it provides a way for personal expression. While words were difficult, making art, especially in the company of Dangerfield Ashton, my art teacher at the Spartanburg Day School, was the easy way for me to communicate. Here is one of my earliest collaborative pieces. <laughs> I lovingly drew the elephant, the balloons on her tail, and the beaming sunshine. Mr. Ashton drew the rest. And trained as an art historian today, I don't, it would be a far cry or a big stretch to call this work beautifully executed. But I can attest to the passion and the individuality of expression that it holds. Over the years, my art making skills developed as did my capacity to perform well in history, English, and philosophy. I also picked up other languages, Latin, French, and German. But my inclination to express my personal perspectives and feelings through art remained sincere, steadfast, but forever idiosyncratic. My own Tarzana swinging through the jungle this was the product of a ninth grade art class or art assignment given to me by Linda Hutchins. I remember well the tasks at hand. The project involved copying, remixing, and transforming to express something wholly new and original. I methodically copied perfume bottles cut out of a magazine and a Rousseau jungle landscape. I remixed those bottles into the body of a woman and placed her in a jungle setting, quite the contrast to the sophistication of perfume. So the result, a quirky scene, a symphony of color, and a woman beautifully sensed swinging through the jungle, something I had only seen Tarzan do up until that time. So this might also be one of my earliest feminist expressions. More than a way to communicate personal ideas and perspectives, art provides a window out into other worlds, into understanding people and values of the past and present. 
This window opened for me when I took my first art history class and we went on a trip to the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. There, I was overwhelmed by the portraits by Alice Neal. The emotional intensity of her work intrigued me and inspired a lot of questions about her sitters. Who were these girls? Where did they live? What was their story? And why did they look so sad? I was hooked again into understanding diff about people, different religions, places, periods, and history and cultures through art. My study of art history has provided a way for me to understand and experience the vitality and dynamism of the diversity of cultures and people that make up our world. Thomas Aikens, the subject of my undergraduate thesis, opened up for me an understanding of the trauma and drama of experimentation in developing fields like medicine in 19th century America. It was through Aikens that I actually learned that medical students learned their profession in public theaters where surgeries were practiced live. I really came to love Aikens, not just for the stories he shared to me and with me about 19th century America, but more about how he pushed conventions of his time uh, and really changed the notions of what was considered acceptable to convey and capture in a public work of art. This notion of an artist not just recording what he or she feels or sees, but taking some risk having the courage to expand the medium or to push beyond conventional boundaries has become a primary motivator now of my love of art. It was in teaching abstract expressionism to college students when I was in graduate school when I became intrigued by the physicality of painting in Jackson Pollock's work. This artist cared nothing for boundaries or borders canvases were splashed with paint that was guided less by a precise action and more by spontaneous action and instinct. Jackson Pollock really pushed establishments, conventional notions and methods of how you go about making a work of art. He also brought me to discover Helen Frankenthaler one of the few women to ever achieve fame and success as an abstract expressionist painter. Helen Frankenthaler really pushed the boundaries of her medium. She was the first, and others like Jackson Pollock followed, to work on massive, unprimed canvases. This one actually measures seven by 10 feet, and to dilute her oils with turpentine so that they behaved naturally. She let accidents transform her works of art, and by doing so, transformed my understanding and experience with art. Helen Frankenthaler found a new medium by pushing the boundaries of an old one. She also inspired in me a passion for the risk-taking in art and an interest in thinking about and trying to transform mediums. She, her work also begged within me a deeper question, what was my medium? I believe that we are all artists. The key is to finding your own medium and having the courage to unleash the creative forces within so that you may change and transform the way we see and experience the world. My life's art is about building human capital. My work involves encouraging others, especially those who do not know or feel like they have something to say or understand their passions. My, my work is about encouraging them to find a voice and a value in the world. My medium involves building community, and that cannot be done without harnessing the unique, distinctive, creative talents of all of our citizens. When I became president of Converse College six years ago, I decided to push the medium of girls and women in South Carolina and to change expectations of and for them. 
South Carolina ranks at the bottom of all states in terms of women's health and wellness, earnings, educational attainment, and political representation. We're at the top of all states of women and children living in poverty. Currently, we have no female senator representing us in Columbia and not a single woman representing us in Congress or Senate on the national level. My work today involves giving girls and women the courage to break the mold, to paint outside the lines, and to speak without permission. And encouraging them to think of themselves as artists, they get to dream big, imagine unforeseen possibilities, and add whatever colors and shapes and textures to their work that they feel is right. In encouraging them to do this, my hope is that they garner the freedom of expression and exploration to step into their rightful place in our community. And they do. I have seen a shy student join the debate team and move on to law school on full scholarship. An overweight pianist discover nutrition, lose 70 pounds, and find a rare contralto voice within that's taken her on to the Peabody Institute. I have known a student who's arrived at Converse really aspiring only to marry a U.S. Senator. <laughs> she left with that same aspiration, but more importantly, with a sense of herself as an author and a writer to share her own perspectives and views and stories with the rest of the world. I believe today that a great work of art is no longer about a single artist working in isolation or about the individual expression of a unique perspective. Masterpieces today are developed by creating new techniques, developing new strategies, and building new connections. A great work of art involves harnessing a diversity of talent to create something wholly unique and original in a community. Today, one of my favorite artists is Janet Eckelman, not only because she's transformed the notion of what a textile artist does, she creates these amazing billowing sculptures that tower over urban environments throughout the world. But more importantly, her visions could never have been created had she not harnessed the talent of computer scientists uh, engineers, urban planners, philanthropists, public servants, and entrepreneurs to make them happen. In turn, these sculptures have completely transformed the community's experience of their urban environment. She has provided a new kind of urban perspective. So much of who I am today has its roots in who I was as a child. I recently came across a file of old papers in my mother's home. She's a great collector of the accomplishments of her children. There I found a report card from second grade, a time when I was more oriented towards art making than the traditional school subjects. My teacher, Mrs. Copenhauer, had noted that I made good progress on a social studies lesson on the community. Community is the medium for practicing my art. I love art because there I found my way for personal expression, my window into other worlds, and my willingness to push boundaries and to reach beyond the traditional. I found my way home. And just think, if all of us could find our medium and appreciate that in others, Think what an amazing work of art we could create. Stronger communities are forged when we encourage individual expression, when we are open to other ways and other worlds, and when we willingly move outside our comfort zone to embrace a diversity of talent to advance the greater good. Thank you.